the nurses were negligent in their decision not to initiate transfer, but to get the CT. Now, this 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 point, I'm going to spend just a, a little time on this because you've heard it over and over again. This this notion that the only choice, the only choice that these nurses had available to them, was to either get the CT or transfer to the ICU. And, 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 and you can't do both at the same time. How many times did you hear that question? Can't do both. So what? So what? Our experts came and told you. And think back on Dr. Cherish. I think, I think he expressed, expressed it most clearly. Dr. Nickham and the nurses, they knew that Ms. Edwards possibly had a condition that could unravel in seconds to minutes. She can go from looking okay and all of a sudden crash and burn. It can happen. <clears throat> Common sense. What's most important in a situation like that? So what's most important, as per experts, is to surround this woman with protection, with care. Check her vital signs more frequently. Just check them. Just to make sure that, that if her blood pressure is going up, oxygen saturation is going down, you'll be able to basically identify it sooner and get help quicker. I'm asking you again, common sense. Or does it make more sense to say, keep her unprotected? You know she can unravel in seconds. And let's go stumbling and bumbling and trying to get IVs when you don't even know you need an IV for radiology. You, you know, then, then you find out she needs to get food or has eaten already and shouldn't have eaten. I mean, I mean th this is precious time. Wasted time. Wasted time. Ask yourself commonsensically, what is most important? This notion that you either had to get a CT scan first or go to transfer first, it is a false notion. There were options. And you heard it through the testimony of all of our experts, Dr. Cherish in particular, the nurses. The nurses could have independently said, hey, we know that this is something that may unravel quickly. Let's get some people down here. Let's get some people down here right now who know what they're doing. We, we don't take care of sick people. Let's get a continuous monitor on her, O2 monitor. Let's do that. Let's check her vital signs. That takes 30 seconds. Let's do that. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. What is, what is reasonably foreseeable? Everybody knew that it was reasonably foreseeable that Miss Edwards would unravel. They knew that. Otherwise, why you write the order to transfer to an intensive care or step down intensive care unit? Why? Why even write that order? You know she had a P. Everybody knows this. What is reasonable under the circumstances? Now, the standard that you're going to be asked to, to look at isn't whether or not it is likely to happen. The question is, is it reasonably foreseeable? And in and, and, and this case, this case is not about the failure to diagnose postpartum cardiomyopathy. That's not what this case is about. This case is about the failure to protect a woman who was giving off flares all morning, all morning that she was in trouble, and no one took the time to get the most basic fundamental information, vital signs, and an oxygen saturation when you knew at 8 o'clock in the morning it was low, low, and you would just put her on 6 liters of oxygen, ask yourself a commonsensical question. Why didn't they go back after 9.48 or whenever, whenever the, the, the blood gas came back and check to see whether or not the 6 liters of oxygen was working? Why didn't they do that? Why? They should have. 